and I do a lot of driving in this job. I don't, I don't find driving very relaxing. Uh, I get quite stressed behind the wheel. And I bought something recently that I thought might help in certain situations. And what I bought was a shiwi. Now, oh. some of you know what it is. If you don't know what a shiwi is, it's a little plastic funnel that ladies can use in order to have a way standing up without having to remove any clothing. It's quite practical, quite functional. Women use it for music festivals, or for going walk and a hike and that sort of thing. I bought it because I got stuck in traffic. I wasn't just like at the lights for ages going, come on, come on, fuck it, I'm just going to piss myself. <laughs> now, I was driving on the M6 between Manchester and Birmingham and a lorry jackknifed and there's 150 cars stuck for two and a half hours. And all of the men were getting out of their cars, they all had a bit of a chat with each other and then they stood in a big long line on the hard shoulder and had to wait and I was really jealous. <laughs> so I got in, ordered a shiwi, it arrived, it's pink, obviously. And I also bought an extension pipe. <laughs> so I thought, if that ever happens again and I get to weigh alongside the men on the hard shoulder, wouldn't it be great if I had the biggest cock? <laughs> Is that all you've got, love? <laughs> Has anybody got a shoulder I can rest mine on? <laughs> but I'm quite practical like that. I, like, I've only been driving a few years, uh, but when I first passed my test, my dad, who I get my practical side from, said to me, right, the following things you should always have in the boot of your car. You need a blanket, you need a flask, you need a shovel. <laughs> and he's right, because whenever I've killed a man, I'm always parched. <laughs> I've got this dress, many reasons, but one of them is that it's got fucking pockets. <laughs> How you make a woman happy, isn't it? Show her something with pockets. This is what feminism is to me. Because I could be scratching my fanny now, you'd have no idea. <laughs> but I've got a friend who's got dungarees and they've got pockets everywhere and she looks amazing in her dungarees. And I'm so jealous and I keep thinking, should I get some dungarees? But she's a lot thinner than me and I've got a horrible feeling I just look fucking pregnant in them. And that's what I said to my husband. I said, I think the only way I could get away with dungarees is if either I lost loads of weight, it's not going to happen, I can't be bothered. Or I wait until I'm so old that I couldn't possibly be pregnant. Which these days, because of fucking science, is about 70, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks, fucking science. My husband went, oh, and I thought, oh, he's got a good logical brain. He's thought of a third solution. He said, you could just wear the dungarees, but always carry a paintbrush with you. <laughs> People just point and go, look at that fat old lady preparing the nursery for our unborn child. <laughs> We're heading on for my favourite time of the day, which is bedtime. Fucking love sleeping. <laughs> I don't, however, sleep naked. Give me a woo if you do sleep naked. <laughs> and if you don't? <laughs> the main reason I don't sleep naked is we've got a cat who's an arsehole. <laughs> And if your toes are popping out the end of the duvet, he will nibble on them. Imagine what he'd do to me, Fanny. I'm not risking it. <laughs> not risking it. But a while ago, a friend of mine rang me one day laughing. She was heavily pregnant at the time. She rang me to tell me the hospital had been on the phone. And they said that when she came in to give birth, she was to bring a nighty. And she thought this was piss funny. She said, who even wears nighties these days? And I didn't say anything, but I wanted to say, me. <laughs> And she said, where would you even get a 90 from these days? And that's when I snapped and said, Marks and Spencers, you fucking idiot. <laughs> but they told her to bring a button down 90, which makes sense for breastfeeding reasons. But I think that's just good advice for all of us, isn't it? If your partner can rummage in the top and then rummage underneath, you don't have to take the fucker off at all. <laughs> There are some health benefits to sleeping naked, let me tell you. There's three of them. Let me talk you through them. Number one. Uh, keeps your temperature down, and I thought, well, sort of sticking a leg out. <laughs> Number two, improve self-esteem. That sounds like a load of shit, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't think it would improve my self-esteem if my husband rolled over to see me lying there with a chin full of tits. <laughs> At least in a night they're contained, aren't they? Instead, it looks like a carrier bag full of bread buns. <laughs> and number three, keeps testicles cool. It's mostly for the men, that one, obviously. <laughs> now, I've met, met, I've met some testicles in my time. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I've never met a cool one. They've all got a degree of sort of tuckiness, haven't they? <laughs> 
like you're waiting for them to dry. <laughs> but I've got a nice tradition. I like to get new pyjamas for Christmas. Does anybody else do that? Yeah. yeah. So last November, I went around various department stores to have a look at what they had by way of new stock in the pyjama department. It wasn't great, if I'm honest. I would say half of them were fleecy. <laughs> That's the noise that women make when parts of them are hotter than the sun. <laughs> Nobody wants thrush for Santa coming, do they? No. <laughs> the other half had slogans across here. I'm 47, fuck off with your slogans. I saw two slogans, one said, it's Prosecco o'clock, which I don't know if you know is not an actual time, it's just a fancy term for alcoholism. And the other one said, there's always time for brunch. And there's not, is there sometimes it's just you and some Weetabix and it's pretty fucking sad. <laughs> but I thought, if they want slogans, why don't they have realistic slogans? So I had a think and I've come up with three ideas. I am gonna pitch them to the department stores, but I wanted to run them by you first. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Three realistic slogans for pyjama tops. Here we go. Number one, don't come too close. I've worn these as clothes for four days. <laughs> Get that one? Get that one? <laughs> Number two, that's not a pattern. It's tomato soup. <laughs> and number three, if I'm honest, the top smells better than the bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> I will pitch them to the department stores and I'll let you know how I get on. <laughs> I stopped buying women's magazines. About six months ago, I stopped buying women's magazines because it feels like there's nothing in there for me. I might as well be buying a magazine about yachts. There's just nothing in there for me. Why would I buy anything where the only time I ever see anybody who looks a bit like me is underneath the word before? <laughs> Magazines always maintain that they're about improving women's lives and it's bullshit because they never they never tell you just to see your friends more often or to read more books it's always the physical things that we're supposed to do to ourselves and the list of those things is quite ridiculous you can have your eyebrows waxed your eyelashes tinted your skin darkened your teeth lightened manicures pedicures cleanse tone and moisturize I'm 38 I've cleansed I've moisturized I've no idea what toning actually is <laughs> does anybody give us a if you do? A few of you. Does anyone shout out what it is? No. <laughs> I'll woo, but I'm not explaining it to her. <laughs> like makeup, I like wearing makeup, I like wearing it on stage, I like wearing it if I go out somewhere nice, but I don't think I need to wear it all the time and I don't think I look weird if I don't have any on. I still don't really understand why I paint over naturally rosy cheeks to then apply rosy cheeks. <laughs> Like hair removal is a whole subject all on its own, isn't it? There's so many different ways, especially as women, that we can remove our hair. You can wax, you can shave, you can pluck, you can epilate. My sister had laser treatment. Laser treatment, which is supposed to be permanent. She had it to her underarms. It was quite painful and quite expensive. And after two months, the whole lot just grew back in. <laughs> which is terrible, but does go some way to explaining why James Bond was always so nonchalant when a laser was aimed at his cock and balls. <laughs> Come back in a couple of months, man, I'll be champion. <laughs> I feel as I've made James Bond a Geordie. <laughs> Maybe that's the future. <laughs> a few cheers for a James Bond that's Geordie, how nice. But according to women's magazines, there are only two options for hair down there for women. One of my friends said to me recently, she said, um, you know why women are supposed to have hair down there, don't you? And I said... Is it like your nose, so you don't get muck up it? <laughs> and she said, no. <laughs> she said, women are supposed to have hair down there so that nature knows where your reproductive bits are. I said, why does nature need to know? Surely as long as me fella's got a rough idea. <laughs> why do all the deers and the rabbits need to know? <laughs> well, maybe the rabbits. <laughs> Actually, as an aside, I should tell you this. I did recently treat myself to a new... Uh, and <laughs> I cannot recommend it highly enough. Uh, it's only got the one speed, which I think a lot of people in this room would be like, one speed, that sounds rubbish. You know what the speed is? Fucking hell yes, that's the speed. 
Any vibrator that needs a square battery is already fine by me. <laughs> but I clearly get this cautious nature from my parents. When I was little and I wanted to play out, my mum would say, play out by all means in the back lane, but leave the backyard door open. And every 20 minutes, I wanted to come past that backyard door and just give us a little wave so that I know you're all right. And she'd stand at that kitchen window for what seemed like hours just to make sure that I was safe. And I know it's just that if I ever got abducted, I'd never be further than Gateshead. <laughs> it's quite satisfying to say that my parents haven't changed in the intervening 30 years. They came to stay with me a few months ago for the weekend, and on the Sunday night, they're packing up the car to go home. And my mum has what she calls her pretty woman bags, which you know, like the cardboard shopping bags as opposed to plastic ones. I'm glad that I know that's what she calls them, because a the month before that, I'd been on the phone when she said, E, I've had a proper pretty woman day. And I thought, I hope you've been shopping and not just sucking off businessmen. <laughs> She's retired, she's got a lot of time on her hands. <laughs> but Pretty Woman for me is one of those films. I think we've all got one of those films where even if you've got the DVD, which means technically you could watch it any time you liked, if it's on the telly, you're watching it. <laughs> and that's one of mine, and it was on not too long ago on ITV 2 plus 1 times 4. <laughs> and you know that scene, even if you haven't seen the film, you know the classic scene where she goes back into the shop that wouldn't serve her, and she says, you work on commission, big mistake, Huge. And I thought that film would have been totally different if she'd been a size 18, wouldn't it? Because <laughs> I'm a size 18 and pretty much guarantee I couldn't get in any designer clothes. I worry about getting stuck in the fucking cubicles, let alone the clothes. <laughs> She'd have gone back in and gone, you work on commission. Well, I've ordered some things online. <laughs> and I don't know if they're going to fit. <laughs> so I bought a handbag to cheer myself up. <laughs> and I filled it with fucking Maltesers. <laughs> so my mum was putting her pretty woman bags in the back seat of the car, my dad said, put them in the boot. And she said, well, I've put them in the back seat. He said, put them in the boot. Well, why can't I just leave them in the back seat? He said, if you leave them in the back seat and I've got to slam my brakes on, they'll take the top of your head off. <laughs> and you'll not be able to wear your bonny dresses that you've just bought, cos you'll be dead. <laughs> And I looked at my mum and she went, if that happens, the receipts are in the bag, just take them back. <laughs> but I was getting annoyed by my period. I've had my period for over 30 years. I've never wanted children, not a moment, not a flicker. I'm sure a lot of you have got kids and you're having a great time with them and that's smashing for you. It's not for me, it's not for me at all. The best way I can describe how annoyed I get every time my period starts is like this. Imagine you've got a friend at work, she's called Deborah. she's great. deborah has got a rabbit hutch. And every month she cleans it out, puts fresh bedding in, fresh water in the water bottle, fresh food in the food bottle, looks spotless, amazing, spick and span. And you say to her, Deborah, are you ever going to get a rabbit? <laughs> and she goes, nah, I fucking hate them. That's what periods are to me. I feel like I'm making up the guest bedroom for a visitor that will ruin my fucking life. <laughs> Enjoy your new baby, madam. <laughs> we do also have very heavy periods. Uh, not today, not any danger in the front row there. Who <laughs> wouldn't do that to you? <laughs> do have very heavy periods. You know the old saying, it's like trying to get blood out of a stone. I think they should update that. <laughs> I think it now should be E, it's like trying to get blood out of a mattress topper. <laughs> in a hotel <laughs> to a very heavy period. I feel like at the beginning of my period, it's quite tricky to explain this, at the beginning of my period, it's a little bit like my arse is in competition. <laughs> well, some of you already know what I mean. That's good, that's helpful. It's a little bit like my arse is going, oh, are we having a big clear out? <laughs> I'll have a big clear out as well, if that's all right. <laughs> could shock me. Nothing could shock me. If I turn around and look down that toilet, there was a dead rat just floating. <laughs> I'd be like, sure, makes sense. The cast of The Walking Dead just climbing out. <laughs> the girl off the ring popping up over the side. Sometimes I look down that toilet, looks like the first 20 minutes of saving Private Ryan. <laughs> I did say there would be some upsetting scenes. <laughs> 
thanks for watching. You know, it'd be great is if you liked and subscribed. I'm so needy, I'm so sorry. Uh, and why not come and see me live? And uh, the tickets are available at sarahmillican.co.uk. Put the kettle on and settle in.